Some of us, when we read the Word of God in our circumstance, become more confused after reading it than before we read it. But yet, this is the Word of God. And Jesus said something very profound here that many of us overlook. And it's very hard. I mean, just imagine. Imagine with me for a minute. This is the Word of God. This is the Word of God. And when we look at this, it depends on our comprehension, our skill to read, to be able to get something out of this. Isn't it interesting? If a person can't read, then can they be saved? Can they live, if we're formed and shaped after the knowledge of Jesus Christ, can they be saved if they cannot read? And that's the point that Jesus is trying to make and cause people to see. That they're pointing to the wrong source. The source is not the book. Jesus said the source is me. Amen. I am the source. And that's the reason that so many people when they read the word of God, nothing happens for them. Mm -hmm. They're still sick. Their loved ones are on their deathbed and they get no answer. All kinds of things. And, and so what happens? As we begin to read this word and we see what it says, we, and it doesn't happen for us, a lot of us turn and say, this must be the will of God for my life. That I am supposed to continue to suffer this way in order for me to live safe. That I'm supposed to be sick. Even though I can't get down on my knees and pray because my knees are all messed up in my feet. I just pray just sitting down and this is the will of God for me. But it wasn't always this way. Jesus is saying that you're pointing to the wrong source. You're pointing to the wrong source. I am the way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am the way. I am the door of the sheepfold. Yes, this is God's word. Yes, it is. And it, I can't tell a lie. This is God's word. It is meant for us to consume. But it is not to give us life. Life comes through Jesus. He said, I will give you life. I will give you eternal life. I will do that. But you've got to come to me. You've got to bow your knee. You've got to draw nigh and close to me. I'm just telling you what can happen in the book. But you've got to come to me. You don't point to the book. You come to me. If you need healing, you come to me and I will heal. If you need deliverance, if you come to me, I will deliver. If you've got a loved one on, the, your, on their deathbed, if you come to me, I will deliver. Hallelujah. But you've got to abide in me. And you've got to let me teach you. You've got to walk with me. You've got to talk with me. You've got to grow in this relationship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And as you grow in me, I will do it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will do it for you. Thank you, Jesus. So what is the intention of God when he gave us the book? What is his intention? Yes, he gave us his word. We are to consume it. But we are not to rely on this for life. Life is in Jesus. It's in Jesus Christ. When the word of God tells you that you will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, that power is increased and grown after confidence from a relationship. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It doesn't come from the more scriptures you read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It don't come from that. 
I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthen me. How do you know that? Hmm? Because you read it? Or because you have a relationship with Jesus? And He has strengthened you when you were down. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus is telling them. He said, search the scriptures. Look through them. Look through it. Keep searching. Keep reading the Bible. And see, that's why people can discredit the scriptures because nothing happens for them. That's why some folks don't pray anymore. And some folks don't fast anymore. Some folks don't go to church anymore because they keep pointing to the wrong source. Hallelujah. Then mm -hmm. Jesus is telling them, search it. Look through it. Go ahead. For in it, you think that you have eternal life. You think that eternal life is in the book. You think the more you learn in here, it will save you. It will deliver you from temptation. You think that. He said, no. It comes through my spirit. Yes. It comes through me. Hallelujah. It comes through my power. It comes through my spirit. It comes through the life that I give you. So you are required as a child of God. You are required to labor on your knees. To labor off your knees. To enter into his rest. You are required to draw nigh to God. You are required to abide in him. You are required and when you do that, you don't have to turn the pages of the book to find your comfort. Mm -hmm. Your comfort will come through the relationship yes. that you have with Jesus Christ. Jesus, hallelujah. You don't have to turn to the pages to know that he is a healer. Because when you have a relationship with him and you're down, Jesus will talk to you and say, you know what, I'm going to heal you. you. Jesus, hallelujah. You don't have to turn to the book to read in the book to know that he will... Heal your loved ones. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Because you have a relationship with them. And you just got through talking to them about them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And he may say to you, I have a plan. How about I do this? So that your joy will be fulfilled and them getting filled with the Spirit. Wouldn't it be wonderful for the Lord to say, I got a plan for them. I'm going to do this. And right after. I heal them, they're going to get saved. Yeah. Watch this. Hallelujah. You know this, and you just shouting. Hallelujah, you got that one good foot going. You're just shouting and praising God. Folks wonder why you shout. Every time you talk to them on the phone, you just praising God. And they on their deathbed. Like, oh, why? What you all happy about? 